lot of times when people look at specs, I think they miss the point about what makes a product good or not. And a good example of this is the iPad. When the iPad first came out, nothing like it existed prior to the iPad. You had devices that had a screen that was large like this, where you could watch a movie or you know go on the internet like your laptop. But there was one difference with the iPad versus your laptop that was worth everything. And the difference was that with the iPad, you just pushed a button like this and it turned on instantly. And in like four or five seconds, you could go online and start writing. That didn't come across in the specs. People would look at the specs and say, well, the screen is this big or the battery life is that big or the processor is this and things like that. And they would compare it to you. Should you buy an iPad or should you buy a laptop? Because remember, the iPad was very expensive. And the problem with the problem with that way of thinking, just looking at it in terms of specs, was you kind of miss the user experience. And the thing, again, is that if you had to rate the features on a scale, the idea that you could just turn on the iPad instantly and start watching you know, something on the internet or watching a movie, that was worth 10 points. That wasn't a minor thing, and it was worth a lot more than specs like the uh, how much memory it had or how much it cost or you know what processor speed it had or whatever. So same thing when you get to the Flash. I'm looking at all the different reviews and comments on the forums and people are going like, well, it puts out X amount of power and it costs $1,000. I can get a Godox unit that puts out the same amount of power for a third of the price. Or, you know, the battery isn't as big as the battery on the Godox and you can get more on and on and on. But you got to look, for me, there are other features you want to look at that don't always show up in a spec sheet. And that's like the usability factor. I never read the instructions for this at all. I, you know, I just figured that was the power button because it was a different color than the other buttons. And sure enough, it was the power button. And then you just turn this to turn it on. But to set the power is so simple. You just roll it and then you figure, oh, that must be the test button. And then you test it like that to shoot. So the idea that it's so simple to work is a really, really big deal. So it has manual and TTL, which is a hard switch, which is great because what you can do is if you're using like a Nikon, you could take a picture on TTL and the flash will fire a certain amount of power because TTL is an automatic mode. Once it fires that amount of power, it's going to tell you what power it fired on. In this case, it would be 5.5. And then I can flip the switch down to manual and now I'm permanently on 5.5 and then I can shoot at 5.5 or I can roll it a little higher or roll it a little lower. That type of design is just so clever. I don't even have to look at the switch. I don't have to dig into a menu to do that. The company understands how I would use this product that when I get this group shot together, because that's the kind of thing that I do with the flash as a group shot where they're posed and they're looking at the camera. So I would put it on TTL, fire a shot, see, look at the screen on the Nikon to see if the picture is too bright or too dark change that switch from TTL to manual, and now I know how to adjust the power. So another thing that I thought was really cool about the Flash was this. So these attachments are really, really nice. The, this dome that softens the light, and I use this on a lot of pictures. It does eat the light. The battery went a little quicker than I thought because most of the time that I used the Flash, I was in this configuration. I used this bounce card like this here. And again, I never read the instructions about how to put this together. I just did, excuse me, what I thought it would look like put together. But I'm gonna show you another thing that I liked about this. So anyway, I used the flash like this most of the time. So I'm softening the light with this. It's really softening the light twice because the first thing we have is this little diffusion panel. And that diffusion panel is going into this diffusion dome. So these are together. And then that entire contraption is being bounced into this card and possibly off the ceiling. So you put all that together, it's really three ways you're bouncing it. The diffusion glass, the dome, and then this uh, bounce card and possibly the ceiling. So you're getting some really soft light. You're losing a lot of light, of course, going through the diffusion, going through the dome and hitting this card and maybe the ceiling. So you're losing a lot of light, but the battery goes pretty good. It died a little quicker than I thought, but the battery is only $100, which is cheap for Profoto, and to change it is super quick. So if you had another one in your pocket, you would just do that and you would change the battery. So I'm not really worried that the battery doesn't go as long as I thought. What's the purpose? Like, where, where would you use this? Well, if I'm shooting a group shot, my wife asked, what, what is the purpose of this? When would I do this? If I'm shooting a group shot, rather than 
have the flash pointing at people like this, which is a very hard light, which creates a lot of shadow. A lot of times what you would do is point the flash up and bounce it off the ceiling. So if you have a card like this, that helps the light bounce more forward rather than just straight up. Especially if you're not bouncing off the ceiling, you could just use the card like this. But the dome also softens the light. But the light quality that I got from this setup was absolutely gorgeous. But I was actually trying to show you one, something that I really thought was cool about this, and that's this. So when, when I had the dome on like this, I had the dome on and I was shooting some shots like this, and then I wanted to add this. So I said, I wonder if I can add the bounce card while the dome is on, or do I need to take the dome off in order to add the bounce card? I wasn't sure. But I said to myself, this is God's honest truth. I said, no, it's pro photo. It's going to work the way it should. I'm going to be able to just add the bounce card on top of the dome. I knew that was going to be the case. I knew that, they would, that I would not have to take one off to put the other on. And it's little things like that that are really major that it works the way you think it should work. It's working intuitively, and I like that a lot. And you'll notice... I could also do it this way. Let's say I had nothing on the flash. You could take the bounce card and you could have the bounce card on. And if you said, you know, I'd like to add the dome. You would just go and add the dome. Or if you were doing it the opposite way, where you have the dome and then you said, I want to add the bounce card. You wanted to add the bounce card, you could just add the bounce card. The point being, it doesn't matter what sequence you do it in. It doesn't matter whether you add the bounce card and then the dome or the dome and then the bounce card. And that might sound minor. That's the kind of thing that doesn't show up in most reviews or doesn't show up when you're looking at a list of specs that are comparing the Pro Photo to the Godox or something like that. But in terms of actual usability, it's huge. Just like with the iPad, the idea that unlike a lap, because remember with a laptop, you turn it on and it powers up really, really slowly and then it boots up and then it tells you about updates and then it, it is just such a slow process. You never just went to your laptop and instantly turned it on and watched a video. It doesn't work that way. They're better now with the solid state drives, but I'm talking about when the iPad came out. But again, the idea that with the iPad, I just walked over and went bam and it was on. I could instantly be browsing the web. That was huge. So when you get to this pro photo, the usability factor is so high, meaning it's easy to turn on, it's easy to set the power, it's easy to go from automatic to manual. It's very easy to add these attachments. Those points, those uh, features, I guess you'd call it, are worth a lot more than are gonna show up on a, you know, on a list of specs comparing it to another flash. Because when you're really working, you don't wanna sit and think about, do I have the bounce card on first and do I have to switch the order? You don't want to think about that. You just want to grab something and put it on, all right? Here's the one negative thing I found is that when you're working and you're shooting an event, because when, when I'm using flash, it's most likely I'm shooting some kind of event, doing a lot of grip and grin shots where people are looking into my camera. That's the way I've used it. That's really why I bought this flash. And that kind of situation, I'm constantly bumping the camera. I'm walking through crowds. It's a party or it's some kind of like networking event or something. And very often I found this thing getting hit and it comes off a little easy. If you were shooting in a very, um, I don't know, controlled space, that would not be an issue for you. But if you're kind of bobbing and weaving through a crowd, this thing fell off four or five times when I was I'm shooting in Seattle. And, you know, people are like, oh, something fell off your flash. Sometimes I even notice it because I'm running off to the next spot. So um, you definitely want to be aware of that. But if you leave it like this, you don't really have that much worry about um, the thing falling off. This will stay on. And this card was shockingly, it comes with the flash, but it's only $30, which is for pro photo, that's really cheap. So I'm definitely going to buy another one and keep it in the camera bag. And it's kind of cool because when you take it apart, it stores pretty flat. So you can put this in a camera bag pretty easily. And for $30, I'm definitely going to get another one and just leave it in the bag. Does for... it only come in white or does, does that come in white? Well, it only comes in white because you only, my wife wants to know if this only comes in white. Of course it only comes in white because you only want to bounce white. There's no reason to bounce another color. 